Hey everybody, Dom here. Today I'd like to discuss why I dislike Coldstream. Quick backstory, Coldstream is the name of one of the campaigns in Left 4 Dead 2. Effectively, it's a set of levels for the game to be played in sequence. Coldstream originally started off as a fan community project by someone named Matthew Lourdelet. In March 2011, it was added to the PC version of the game as a beta for people to give feedback on. It was officially released in its final form in July 2012. In August 2012, it was released as downloadable content for the Xbox 360 version of the game. Coldstream is a non-canonical chapter of the game. It doesn't really fit into the overall story, sort of acting as its own standalone thing. Comparatively, all other Left 4 Dead 2 campaigns start and end into each other, each picking up where the last left off, making for one long continuous story. Not Coldstream. It's fine. It's acceptable to have levels in a video game for levels sake and not include anything to advance the story. It's costly to get voice actors in to reprise their roles and record new voice lines. Coldstream's faults lie elsewhere. The most obvious overarching problem with Coldstream, something that hangs over the entire experience and can't be ignored, is the pacing. Coldstream has poor pacing. Moments to rest, explore for supplies, or slow down are very rare and unusual. The campaign has a lot of crescendo events. Crescendo events are events where the game continuously spawns in common infected to rush the survivors. The overabundance of non-stop action this creates is what kills the pacing. This raises the question, how could it be a bad thing to have constant action? It's a zombie shooting game, isn't that the point? Well yes, but actually no. Mundane downtime is just as important as action-packed uptime. Moments of action are accentuated by having moments of downtime. It's boring to do only one thing, even if that one thing is shooting zombies rushing towards players. It's exciting to have an alarm go off and trigger a crescendo event, causing zombies to rush at the players from all sides, IF they just spend some time slowly searching through offices for supplies. Left 4 Dead gameplay is at its best when there's a build-up to the action-packed moments. Coldstream lacks downtime, and thus lacks this build-up. Another problem with Coldstream, which is related to pacing, is that it's very repetitive. The entire campaign consists of following a stream. Survivors get out of the stream, travel near it, and enter buildings close to it, but basically, up until the very end, they're following it. There are interesting landmarks along the journey, like sewers and a large bridge, but because the survivors are only doing one thing, following a stream, it all feels like one long boring task. The campaign has variety, but feels like it doesn't. One aspect of the campaign that accentuates the repetitiveness is the placement of tank events. Excluding the very end, because a tank is expected to be there, there are two set locations where a tank will spawn and attack the survivors. These fights always happen and have no meaningful variation to them. Variety is lost when it's expected that every playthrough there will be a tank in the same places. On a related note, there are no witches in Coldstream. Outside of a versus mode bug and mutations, no witches can spawn in this campaign. This also lowers gameplay variety. On the topic of pacing and repetitiveness, Coldstream utilizes a crescendo event at the end of each of its levels. At the end of each level is an event where a continuous horde of infected run in and attack the survivors as they try to get to the next safe room or finish the level in the case of the final level. No other official campaign in the game utilizes such an event on every single one of its levels. Having a super high intensity situation at the end of every level hurts the pacing, and having the same ending to every level is repetitive. The level design itself does not facilitate exploration. For the most part, every weapon and item the survivors could ever need is directly on the main path. The spawn points for supplies is often on the ground directly where the survivors are meant to go. Interesting decision making is lost due to this. On other campaigns, players can decide to take some time and search for supplies rather than progress forward. They may risk time and possibly health in search of items. That's interesting and fun. Player agency is lost when most items spawn on the main path. Now that the overarching problems of Coldstream have been addressed, it's time to go map by map and discuss specific examples and showcase other smaller problems. The first map of the Coldstream campaign is titled Alpine Creek. It starts off with a camera flying to the starting area. This is pretty useful for first time players to indicate where to go. There's hardly a moment to pick up weapons before the infected start attacking. There's one singular path to the first landmark, a radio tower. One of only two places in the entire map that deviate from the singular path through the map. As survivors progress forward, they have to enter a log cabin and weirdly the only way to go is to jump out of a second story window in the back. After being forcibly slowed down traveling over a gorge, the survivors find a hatch in the floor. The map ends with a crescendo event. A survivor has to open the hatch. The mechanics of this hatch are specific to this one hatch and nothing else in the official content of the game. It can be stood on and pushes players as they open it. It also does not need to be opened all the way. No indication is given to the player that they don't need to open it fully. As soon as the hatch starts opening, infected start spawning underground on the other side of the hatch and rush at the survivors. There's no strategy or skill to this crescendo event, as the ones coming from the front are in a straight line. 
Clearing out infected in such a confined space is boring. It's comparable to shoveling snow, a chore that has to be done to progress. The second map of the Cold Stream campaign is titled South Pine Stream. It starts off by blinding players with a lighting effect. This is quite weird considering the sun's not visible from the tunnel's exit. After a short distance, the survivors pass an invisible trigger and spawn a tank to fight them. This tank fight has a little bit of a cinematic touch. The tank enters with a small avalanche and a large boulder which it can utilize to incapacitate the survivors. After the tank is defeated, the survivors have to climb a ladder with clipping problems. It's very easy to accidentally fall off this platform and have to climb the ladder again. When they get to the road, they're greeted with supplies sitting directly in front of them on the ground. After alternating between traveling by road and by stream twice, the survivors find themselves at the trigger for this map's crescendo event. Barrels must be shot, they explode, damaging survivors who are too close. Like the previous map, the survivors have to fight their way to the safe room as hordes of infected rush at them. This area is pretty monotonous. The rushing water that pushes players into a black abyss is an interesting touch. Oddly, players attempting to rescue survivors hanging off the waterfall's edge will be pushed and find themselves also hanging. But, AI controlled survivors can do it without incapacitating themselves. The very end of the map contains a large glitch. The horde of common infected that rush the survivors spawn in the safe room. This is normal. A few other campaigns have the infected spawn in safe rooms too. The problem is, when survivors are in the safe room, the infected can still spawn sometimes. Infected spawn in from thin air, directly within line of sight of players. This oversight makes Cold Stream look unfinished. The third map of the Cold Stream campaign is titled Memorial Bridge. It starts off with survivors once again exiting sewers. After emerging, they scale staircases and navigate on a bridge. A burning tanker truck on the bridge explodes as part of a scripted event and a horde of infected attack. Afterwards, the survivors must get down from the bridge. This is done by climbing down a ladder, one of the most dangerous and frightening things to do in a first-person Source Engine game. This isn't a joke. Source Engine ladders always feel a bit strange to use, and the process of attaching to one and traveling down at such a height is dangerous. Towards the end of the map, completely unexpectedly, planes fly by exploding parts of the bridge above, causing the debris to fall and trigger a car's alarm, causing the map's rush to the end crescendo event to occur. The fourth and final map of the Cold Stream campaign is titled Cutthroat Creek. This map copies the idea of the Parish campaign's final map, the bridge. The bridge served as the final map for the entire game's story, so it was intentionally grand and exciting. A lot of comparisons between the two maps can be made. Both consist of one long crescendo event where infected constantly rush the survivors. Constantly excluding the pause in the middle for the tank fight. Cutthroat Creek starts with a building with supplies and a garage door that opens to start the crescendo event. There's no build up to the event starting. The door simply opens. The parish's bridge starts similarly. The difference is, the bridge has no enemies up until the survivors start the crescendo event, and the buildup is way better. There's anticipation of the challenge ahead as the bridge slowly lowers and the barrier slams down with a loud bang. Something that more logically would cause infected to be alerted. After survivors exit the building, one of the worst designed areas in the entire game starts. Survivors must fight down a gorge on a stream. This part of the map consists of one long, straight, narrow stretch of space completely devoid of any items or really anything. It's just empty space for the sake of empty space. To compare to the parish's bridge map again, even the most simple areas, at least there were multiple paths. Following the long gorge, there's a turn and a one-way drop leading to the midway tank fight. Once the tank is defeated, there's a long tunnel. It's very cramped. After the survivors exit the tunnel and make a little more progress, they pass an invisible trigger that changes the music, signifying that they have to rush to the end of the map as a tank will soon be attacking. The rest of the map is a few simple turns. At the very end, the survivors climb a tower and then a ladder to enter a helicopter. The ladder is a bit strange as it can be climbed at a slight angle that can cause the survivors to get snagged near the top. Anyways, that was the video. A quick breakdown of Cold Stream and explanation of its faults. Thanks for watching and please enjoy this compilation of glitches from the various maps. Au revoir!
Dom. Where the hell do you think you're shooting? Thanks. 